está viendo una sección de vis a vis que es muy gozosa y que verdaderamente estaba esperando que llegara. Porque veréis, esta Prena la Culpa Map eh, ha sido una historia de colaboración entre personas de muchos lugares. Sabéis que la plataforma de base se llama Ushaidi, viene de África, tiene una historia preciosa. Y aquí tenemos a Angela Udor Lungati para que nos la explique. Eh, pero luego es, existe esta capa española, digamos, ese trabajo de finalizar el mapa español que ha sido creado por el gran Pablo Ruiz Mutkiz, un de Caleidos, un, un verdadero baluarte del, del software libre. Entonces, este es un diálogo entre los dos, van a hablar entre ellos. They will be speaking to each other, I think in English. I don't know if you will be speak, both of you in English, I think. Pablo, yes. will you be yes. speaking in English? Yes. Great. That's correct. So, you will be speaking in English with each other. We will understand the origin of Ushaidi and then what we have been doing in Spain to transform Ushaidi and Frena la Curpa maps. You have 25 minutes and uh, um, Angela, Pablo, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Gracias. Gracias, eh, Antonella. Eh, una breve introducción en español. Efectivamente, hablaremos en inglés con eh, Angela eh, Uruor Lungati. Y antes de empezar y cambiar a inglés, eh, primero, eh, muchísimas gracias, Antonella. Estamos todas con la boca abierta por eh, el trabajo que estás haciendo hoy. Impresionante. And now uh, we'll switch to English and um, it's, it's uh, an honor really to have Angela uh, with us. Um, uh, I, I actually haven't met her at all. Uh, this is the first time we are having a face-to-face -face, uh, meeting after six weeks uh, working together around Frena La Curva uh, thanks to their amazing platform at Ushahidi. And I would like Angela uh, herself in, in a few words, uh, if you could do a, a quick introduction of yourself, Angela, so everyone uh, can, uh, can know you and, and understand your context. Absolutely. So uh, much like everybody has said, my name is Angela Odur Lunati. I am the executive director at Ushahidi. I've been with Ushahidi for 10 years. I do have a software development background, but I've moved from that to, you know, helping build strategic partnerships and doing outreach and training to community management before then taking over as um, the, the new leader since October last year. So in short, I'm a technologist and I'm, I'm an open source software advocate and I'm very passionate about building technology that's appropriate for solving problems in our communities. Wonderful. So uh, speaking uh, of technology, um, I think everyone would like to know why exactly did you create Ushahidi platform? What were the sort of the main objectives behind that? Because it's not mm -hmm. something you developed like last year, but actually has uh, mm -hmm. a long history. Yes, absolutely. I'll try to be very brief with the historical background. Um, we are a software company that was started about 12 years ago. Um, started as a result of the post-election violence that broke out in Kenya in 2008. The problem then was that ordinary citizens were unable to report um, what was happening to them in different parts of the country. And so a group of five Kenyan bloggers, the founders, came together and set up a web platform that would then allow for people to send in text messages, emails, tweets or fill out a web form and essentially just create awareness about what was happening um, around them. So really the goal was to create um, some element of transparency in some of the issues that are happening um, to people on the ground uh, in, in a fast hand manner, but then also to make sure that you are including some of the unusual suspects in the conversation, that it's not just a top down approach to making decisions, that it's really a bottom up one. Okay. So, uh... yes. At my, at my company, Kaleidos, we, we do make use of technology, uh, you know, most, mm -hmm. most often uh, creating it too, uh, but mm -hmm. always staying away of technology for the sake of technology. You know, it, ha it has mm -hmm. to have some impact and it also has to be uh, sustainable. So even uh, if it was very tempting uh, for us to go, uh, you know, six, six, seven weeks ago when we, uh, we went into lockdown, it was very tempting to go and create a, a new piece of technology around, uh, around the map. Uh, I mean, we are good at that. That's, that's what we do. That's our expertise. We decided to reach out and, and find suitable projects that were out there. And, uh, and I mean, surely there are many map related initiatives. Uh, we found uh, many, many uh, projects out there. But then we found Ushahidi to be mm -hmm. the closest to our ideas but also mm -hmm. to our values. 
Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that's, that was very important to us. And uh, I would like to know a bit more about your core values at Ushahidi. I mean, surely this is not just technology, it's technology mm -hmm. with values. And, uh, yes. and, and I would like to know more about that. I think one of the first ones that I would talk about is, you know, openness and transparency that you're really building um, in a manner that is, um, you know, inviting for other people to jump in and build that you're not trying to build a silo and really trying to encourage a lot of collaboration um, and that it's being done in the open. I think that's one of the reasons why, you know, that the platform is open source. I think one of the other really important values for us is the community making sure that you are including everybody um, that ne needs to be a part of the solution in it. That it's not just a matter of, you know, a group of people sitting around in a different area, developing something and expecting somebody else to go and consume it, but really working closely together um, in service of solving a problem that we all understand really, you know, really well. And I think the other one would really be around um, innovation and looking at it in a different way, as opposed to trying to build new, shiny and exciting things, having it really be focused on, um, you know, the audiences that we're building for, the element of it being appropriate, that you're innovating and building uh, tools that will meet your audience where they are. And that's one of the primary reasons that, um, you know, the mobile phone or rather mobile has been a really big um, part of, of our strategy so that you're able to reach as many people as possible. Okay. So you, you yeah. talked about transparency and openness. Mm -hmm. I think uh, open yes. source is um, a free and open source is uh, definitely one of the, um, uh, the approaches and, and movements uh, that do foster those uh, principles and values. I would like to add that I think ethics in technology goes beyond, uh, of course, the license it carries. Uh, you've got mm -hmm. uh, Ushahidi is, is open source, uh, that's yes. for sure. Um, mm -hmm. But it's um, but it's it's a key ingredient when we were looking for options. You know, when we were uh, six, seven weeks ago, we were looking for uh, platforms uh, that would ha share our values. But we're also looking mm -hmm. for openness and transparency, and that that meant mm -hmm. uh, basically that meant free and open source software. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, because we, we kept in mind that we had some red lines that we didn't want to cross uh, in order to uh, mm -hmm. put in place a platform mm -hmm. uh, and then inviting a lot of people to the platform. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're mm -hmm. devising a map, I think that is, that is going to pinpoint vulnerable people mm -hmm. or it's going to pinpoint individuals offering their help, which also requires them to take some risks. Uh, we needed to think about like the protocols in place, uh, but also to think about uh, how the technology would be auditable, um, how feasible any change we needed. I mean, for sure, we, we have been um, forced to adapt every single week uh, during this pandemic. So it doesn't make sense to take just one piece of technology and believe it's going to be uh, okay as it is for a longer period. So having it as, as open source in, in, in only for, uh, I mean, for the individuals that are, you're going to invite, but also for your own uh, independence and autonomy. I think that is, that was uh, a key. Um, and I would like to know a bit more about why, you know, why is free and open source such a key aspect at Ushahidi and, and its content? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So looking back at our history, um, making the Ushahidi platform open source is a very deliberate um, effort by the founders to make sure that it was accessible to everyone around the world so that you are lowering the barriers of access and use of technology, right? You know, regardless of your financial ability, you know, if you had a problem that would be very easy for you to whip up an instance and, you know, try and recreate the same kind of success that you're seeing other groups uh, uh, using. Um, the second bit is also um, the element of adaptability, right? So, you know, having a base that people can then build off of and adapt to their own individual context was also very important. So, you know, making it much easier for whether it is a group like yourselves in Spain to take a tool that has been built primarily from, you know, from Africa and being able to apply that across, you know, 14 other countries. You know, that's a beautiful thing about, uh, a beautiful thing about open source. Um, I think the other thing was a recognition of the fact that given the, the potential and the potential that the tool had and the impact that it was likely to create, that it was something that we would need to build together with the community. And I think that's something that, you know, being open source allows us to do, that it allows for you to invite people with, 
diverse opinions, diverse cultures, diverse um, expertise, and allow that to get built into the platform, um, making it much more holistic and um, you know, just amazing for anybody out there to make use of. Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, I, w I wouldn't say unfortunately, but it's true that we, uh, we, <laughs> yeah, you know, having uh, this face-to-face, uh, -face, uh, even digitally, uh, mm -hmm. driven face-to-face uh, -face meeting uh, because we are we are suffering from this uh, pandemic, mm. uh, the, the infamous uh, COVID-19. Uh, mm -hmm. But as you say, you know, Shahidi was born, uh, was not born last year. It was born like 10, 12, 12 years ago. Yes. Um, so I would like to know, uh, I mean, we are now very intensively using Shahidi and we are mm -hmm. using the latest release, uh, what you call mm -hmm. uh, release uh, three plus. Uh, or yes. at least that, that's the way we look at it. Yes. Um, but surely, uh, I mean, there have been other humanitarian crises, other mm -hmm. instances in the in the past where Ushahidi has been uh, put to test. Yes. Uh, that the platform has been a key ally, and mm -hmm. uh, it would be great if you could share uh, with 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 the audience, uh, you know, one or two examples that you're most proud of uh, for whatever okay. reasons. You know, it's just up to you really to to cherry pick a couple of those. Okay, so two examples. Hmm. <laughs> All right. Um, so for just for, for the rest of the, the audience to know, you know, as I said before, the platform has been around for more than 12 years. It's been used more than 180,000 times in the last 12 years in more than 160 countries across three main categories of social impact. So you're looking at crisis response, much like the COVID-19 crisis now. You're looking at um, transparency and accountability, so some election monitoring projects there, and then um, human rights and advocacy. Um, if I were to think about examples that are really close to my own heart, I think one of them would be the Kenyan election project, Uchaguzi, given the fact that we were born out of an election, uh, an electoral crisis. Um, the, the subsequent times that the platform has been deployed for that has been um, more of a proactive measure as opposed to a reactionary one to empower local citizens to protect their votes. So, you know, tapping into that collective intelligence and allowing them to be the ones telling us about, hey, I have gone to my polling station and it was not open, um, or I didn't get access to my voting center when I actually should have, and then have that information come onto our system and get forwarded to partners who could who could then respond. Um, you know, we've, we've, and that's one of the, few times where Ushahidi gets involved in not only building the technology, but actually managing the managing the data itself, right? Because, you know, it's a tool that was born out of the Kenyan election, so it makes sense that we'll always, you know, we'll always want to play a part there. Um, if I think about another example that might be a little closer to home, so thinking about the, you know, crisis response, one of the major ones that people know us for is the Haiti earthquake in 2010. Um, I think that was the first time that you were seeing humanitarian responders working hand in hand with technologists and, um, you know, humanitarian volunteers to help match those who are in need at that point with those who could actually help, right? So, um, and reducing the amount of time that it would take for for that matching to happen people sending in text messages and having the needs being directly identified based on what the person on the ground is actually feeling um, or actually in need of and we've seen several instances of that for example the the nepal earthquake in 2015 as well by a group called the kathmandu living land so very similar, you know, looking at ways of engaging with people who are affected by a crisis directly using the tools they have access to, and then forwarding that information to responders so that they're able to then respond much more effectively than they would have before. Well, wonderful, wonderful two examples. Um, uh, I mean, of course, we when we were looking for a platform that uh, was suitable for our needs, um, mm -hmm. even if there, those needs were sketchy at, at, at the beginning, we were looking mm -hmm. at these other uh, experiences. I think in part, we were confident that we have chosen the, the right platform and the right people to, to trust uh, mm -hmm. we can, because we, we kind of uh, sort of saw this. Um, I mean, to be completely honest, at first, mm -hmm. uh, we were a bit concerned that a particular existing mapping strategy, such as Ujahi, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. would be bound to previous types of crisis so much mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. that our newly created protocol you know specific to spain specific to covid 19 specific to a central a certain uh, temporal framework uh would find yeah. itself uh making too many compromises to be able to mm -hmm. make use of Ushahidi, you know that that, that way mm -hmm. where you 
you you uh, start adapting to the platform instead of uh, making the platform adapt to your, to your context. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so we we were uh, we were uh, I mean to be completely honest that that and that I think that's a fair risk and a fair um, judgment to make. But in the end, uh, I mean, any map should be able to hold almost anything that portrays a physical location, right? Uh, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we found ourselves um, comfortable enough with our own project idea. That was, mm -hmm. that was uh, key uh, because initially we didn't think, and this is important for you, you, you probably you don't know this, or, but mm -hmm. we, weren't, we weren't sure whether a map was a good idea mm. or it, it would make matters worse. You know, um, yeah. So first, we had to think: uh, is it is it fair and is it good to pinpoint vulnerable people? Is it is it useful uh, uh, to see where people are offering help? Uh, what mm -hmm. are the protocols? You know, the the conception mm -hmm. of uh, the 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 least relevant uh, thing was technology. It was uh, if we were doing the right thing. Okay, but once mm -hmm. we found ourselves comfortable enough uh, with our own project idea. Mm -hmm. Then Ushahidi was there to say, you know, I'm super flexible. Uh, uh, we <laughs> created our own language. I mean, you have, uh, Ushahidi has been translated to many languages. We created yes. our own COVID-19 Spanish language <laughs> because uh, we <laughs> thought, right. hey, this is great. Uh, there's certain mm -hmm. terms here, important. Mm -hmm. uh, like, yep. uh, and, and we just basically mutated those to uh, make sure that the, the wording, you know, the vocabulary was uh, context uh, specific so that, that was one, yes. one thing that we made so we're not using uh, vanilla spanish um <laughs> using uh, particularly covid spanish uh, terminology um now and that's uh, amazing yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, and and uh and there are other countries now uh, uh portuguese speaking countries like uh, portugal and brazil of course and mm -hmm. and um that surely uh, uh, would like to contribute for a long-term translation uh, for Ushahidi. Mm -hmm. um, oh, that's now, amazing. Fast forward six weeks. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, coming back to the, to the present day, uh, uh, what are you learning about Ushahidi, uh, Ushahidi's role uh, for this uh, pandemic? You know, because uh, surely for every crisis, Ushahidi will, it's, it's what it is. It's a, a platform that wants to be helpful and useful for a crisis like, uh, like, like the ones we know or the ones yep. we don't know. And this was uh, mm -hmm. something that only a few countries uh, were exposed to with uh, the previous mm -hmm. SARS, SARS uh, virus. So mm -hmm. in your context, you know, what is, what is your, what you're learning the most uh, in terms of Ushahidi uh, with the COVID-19 crisis? That's a very interesting question. So, you know, when you were speaking earlier and talking about some of the concerns you are having about whether the map would be, would be you know, a good way of supporting during this crisis, we had, you know, pretty much the, the, the same kinds of questions. And then as time went by, you know, um, it's now six weeks later, we're seeing more than 540 COVID-related maps using Ushahidi just in the last six weeks. And it's been, I think it, what it's done is cemented um, a piece um, that has been very um, central to what we're doing moving forward, which is really focusing on empowering ordinary citizens to help solve their own problems and really, you know, tap the importance of collective intelligence. Um, when you look at a vast majority of the, the examples of, of people using the platform now, like yourselves, it's really, you know, local communities and grassroots organizations self-organizing, right, to fill informational gaps that will either inform what governments will be doing, or um, it's them trying to connect vulnerable groups with the resources that they critically need. So, you know, it's, it's, I wouldn't say that it's a new lesson. It is something that's been cemented in a much in a much more pronounced and heavy way. That we really need to focus on making sure that the tool is as easily accessible to grassroots organizations, and that they also have the resources that they require to be successful in being able to solve some of these problems. Right. So beyond just building the mapping tool, you know, are we thinking about things like privacy and, and security? Are we thinking about you know different ways of making it? even more efficient to manage the data coming in, right? You know, is it, you know, making it much easier to automatically tag a few things or categorizing um, information? But yeah, I think that would be one of the, 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 biggest, the biggest lessons for us, that it's really, um, it, it cemented the fact that it's really, really important to make sure that local communities have 
access to these critical tools and the, the resources that they need to even make them um, much more successful. And so even moving forward, one of the things that we're trying to do aside from providing the tech and you know, making sure it's stable is also seeing what ways can we also support you as a community? Is it linking you up with other groups that are doing similar work? Is it signal boosting some of your work? Um, or is it you know, providing some additional strategic guidance? Um, so those are some of the things that we're looking, you know, thinking about moving forward, even towards post the, the curve being flattened. Okay. And uh, yeah. so uh, surely for us that uh, all those lessons will be, uh, will be uh, put to work for future releases mm -hmm. of Mushahidi and also not just releases, but uh, you know, the, 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 uh, the ecosystem. Um, mm -hmm. uh, so we know, we know we're going to benefit from all of that. I was wondering mm -hmm. from your side, uh, mm -hmm. what do you, what do you th uh, think about when you knew about Frena La Curva, uh, Frena La Curva maps? Uh, yeah, roughly six weeks ago. Uh, what was your first impression? You know, because I think I, I cannot. I think I, I, I sort of wrote an email saying uh, we're doing this test. Yes. Uh, just so yes. you know, uh, but then yep. we launched that in in just a few days. It was uh, really blazingly fast. Uh, mm -hmm. What was your first impression? What uh, you know of that at the time? The best I can. It, it was a moment of awe and you know discovery and awe. It was. I think the word I can use to describe how all of us are feeling is just absolutely amazed and mind blown because within a matter, you know, within such a short period of time, you are able to quickly deploy the platform. But then one other really beautiful thing that made us, you know, really happy was seeing, aside from setting up the website itself, was all these fantastic resources that you also managed to do. It's like, you know, you took a manual, set up some very quick videos, and very quick guides that made it much easier for anybody to jump in and understand and we're like whoa right you know th there's always an assumption that we would have to be the ones to do that kind of work but seeing how quickly you were able to do that was it was really amazing so it was it was really inspiring um and i think it also inspired other groups outside of spain to do the same thing so not just the friend of la curva ones which are amazing which is a whole other different story um i think for us seeing how how seamless you've managed to develop a model that is being applied in more than 14 countries and seeing how quickly they're able to then whip up with self-hosted instances, not on our servers, has been fantastic. Um, and also seeing how quickly people are then also able to adapt in their own context with the languages. Um, and seeing other countries, whether, you know, trying to do similar things, trying to create awareness about where certain things might be missing, it's honestly, it's been inspiring. That is the best one I can do. It's been really, really this is the being recorded, team. right? This is being recorded. I would like to listen to this. Uh, <laughs> no, really, <laughs> you should. I mean, honestly, you you are the stars right now. It's um, you embody exactly what we look for in open source users and in uh, you know a community that is really embracing and open and inviting to other people that is willing to share your lessons and see others learn from them and providing them with the resources. It's, it's, it's honestly amazing and really commendable. Thank you so much for your good work. Thank you, Angela. So I think uh, one last question uh, I have is uh, mm -hmm. what are your plans, you know, Adu Shahidi for the foreseeable future, you know, and uh, also most importantly, perhaps, how can we help you? Fantastic. So as I'd mentioned earlier on the call, I came in as, um, I, I wouldn't call myself new anymore, more, more than six months old, um, uh, the, the new executive director pushing us towards um, a strategic shift that many people are terming as us going back to our roots, which is really, you know, committing, recommitting to making sure that the platform is, you know, fully open source, that our open source community also has the resources that they need to be successful. Um, and making sure that people are able to access the tools regardless of their financial ability. So one of the things that's been going on now is also a review of the pricing on the hosted service. Um, that's something that we're actually going to slash completely because you know, it's, it's, it's been more of a barrier than anything else. Um, and looking at other ways of sustaining ourselves as a mission-driven nonprofit organization. So whether that's in our, you know, our support and expertise, so those are the things that we're looking to do, you know, moving forward. We're committing to, you know, the, the open source movement, uh, um, engaging in a much more um, 
proactive way with, with, with our community, exploring our software as a service model, and then also looking at other ways of making sure that our tools are able to adapt to the, you know, the, the ongoing or the, 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 the upcoming needs. So looking at how we can make it much more efficient, how we can um, better inform decision making that's, that's being done. Um, in terms of how you can help, I think just, you know, continue to engage with us. We really, and uh, you know, uh, appreciate all the feedback that we're getting. Please do feel free to jump in. We have a lot of, you know, features and uh, bugs and other requests that you know would be amazing to see our open source community jump into. And of course, if you know there are any um, partners out there who'd be interested in working with us, whether those are donors or, or funders or even just in any project, we're definitely open to that. Um, you know, we are a small team of eleven people. Um, there's seven of us in Nairobi. Our CTO is in Uruguay. I know Romina is actually watching the thing right now. We have someone in Sweden and someone else in Hungary, um, as well as the United States. So, you know, just, just a recognition of the fact that it's, you know, we are a small team, but trying as much as possible to be as supportive to fantastic groups as yourselves. Okay, well, uh, wonderful. Yeah. Thank you very much, Angela. That was such a great pleasure and an honor to have you. And I think this is this is all. This is this is the twenty-five minutes we this have. All. Uh, back this to you, all. Antonella. This is all. This is very very moving. You know, and I remember. Yes. I remember, and and with the motion, the day that I discovered the existence of Shahidi in an article of the Harvard Business Review. You okay. remember that article? Yes. I, it was the first time that the international community came in mm -hmm. contact with that at the level of Harvard. And I yeah. understood that something big was changing in the world. I, yep. I remember perfectly, perfectly the article. And well, and now you're here and now I'm talking to you. So I feel like <laughs> this amazing. life is good despite of everything. You guys, Same. you have another minute and a half. You wanna use it or we say goodbye? I think we, we can ah. say goodbye. No, no, we no. We can say goodbye. Angela <laughs> wants to use the one in minute and a half. Oh, Angela. Sure, 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 um, Angela. Go yeah, ahead. absolutely. I mean, mine is just to, you know, one, say thank you to all of you for all the good work that you're doing to, you know, help people flatten the curve. Um, and just, you know, uh, a reminder that um, communities like yourselves are really, you know, they're, they're really important and, you know, just, Keep your eye on the ball and keep doing what you're doing. Continue to be as open as you possibly can and share these learnings with other people. Um, the impact that your work is doing now, it, it is being felt. So again, thank you so much for myself and from the rest of the Ushahidi team. Thank you so much for your good work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Angela. Thank you, Pablo. You're amazing, Pablo. And let's go to the next.